We present Shadow Neural Radiance Fields, a new method for analyzing multi-view satellite images based on recent advances in 3D computer graphics. This is some of our latest work here at the Advanced Concepts team on the topic of Earth observation. Photogrammetry is the task of extracting 3D information based on a set of 2D optical images of an object or a scene. For example, here is a set of Worldview 3 images that show a building taken from different viewing angles. The idea of photogrammetry is to reconstruct a full 3D representation of the scene based on the 2D images alone. This 3D model is then useful to render new views from previously unseen viewing angles or under different lighting conditions. Being able to extract the surface height is relevant for many different remote sensing applications. For example, biomass estimation, change detection, and land cover classification. A volumetric representation can also be converted into a polygonal 3D surface model for fast rendering. For example, for web or virtual reality applications. This research is different from usual computer vision applications because of the very constrained environment of space. Part of the motivation of this work is to see how much we can achieve using only optical sensors because they use lower amounts of energy than active sensors like LIDARs or radars. Here are a few of the key differences between our case study and on-ground computer vision applications. First of all, we only have access to images with an off-vertical angle smaller than 30 degrees. We also have relatively few images of each scene. Finally, the lighting conditions are different in each image because the sun is never exactly in the same position when the satellite passes by. In many cases, all of the pictures are taken in the morning, so some of the areas in the scenes are always in the shadow. This work is based on neural radiance fields, which were recently developed for novel view synthesis of scenes captured by handheld cameras. The key idea is to represent certain properties of the 3D volume to model how light propagates through the scene. These properties are the color, C, red, green, or blue, and the opacity, sigma. The volumetric representation network is a simple feed-forward multi-layer perceptron that takes as inputs the spatial coordinates of a point and provides as outputs the color and opacity. In order to extract an image from such a representation, we perform array marching for each pixel. Starting at the camera position, we sample along the ray at different locations throughout the scene. We then run the XYZ coordinates of each sample position through the network and extract the color and opacity values. We use these to perform alpha compositing, which is shown in this equation. The expected color is a weighted sum of the colors along the ray, with weights equals to t times alpha. Alpha represents the normalized opacity value between 0 and 1. An alpha of 0 would indicate a transparent material like air, and an alpha of 1 an opaque material like cement. t is the accumulated product of the transparency, 1 minus alpha, along the ray. It represents the amount of light that is blocked earlier along the ray. By multiplying these two quantities together, we get high values only if a point is contributing light and is not occluded by something else. The advantage of this formulation is that it is fully differentiable, which allows for automatic backpropagation through the neural network. The training of a neural radiance field is entirely self-supervised. It requires no ground truth information regarding the shape of the scene. To train the network, we first produce a synthetic image from one of the viewpoints of one of the training images, using the image rendering procedure described before. This allows us to evaluate a loss between the image that is predicted by the network and the real training image. This loss is then backpropagated through to the network weights, which encourages the model to adapt its representation to the content of the training image. Starting with random initial shapes and colors, the network learns a representation that is consistent with the captured scene after several thousands of iterations through the training data. Neural radiance fields are successful in generating consistent volume representations with high quality novel view synthesis, but were not designed for images with varying light conditions, like multi-view satellite images. On the left, we see the basic NERF applied to satellite images with changing shadows. Without an explicit light model, the shaded areas are poorly estimated, both in terms of shape and color. On the right, we can see that with the same data, the shadow nerf model is able to provide a more accurate synthesis of the shadows, including when interpolating between different solar positions. 
Overall, the quality of the shape estimation is also improved. Shadow nerfs are an extension of nerfs in which we've introduced two new physical properties. In practice, these are just two more outputs to the neural network. The first output represents the amount of incoming solar light at each point in space. In other words, the visibility between the target point and the sun. The value depends on the solar direction omega s. The second output is a color vector which models an ambient light source, the sky. The total incoming light color, L, is the sum of the learned sky color and a white light source, weighted using the sun visibility function. This is multiplied by the illumination independent albedo, C, to produce the outgoing light color, which is then used for alpha compositing. These adaptations allow us to perform novel view synthesis in previously unseen lighting conditions. Here is an example of a synthetic flyover of an urban scene learned with the shadow nerf on 512 by 512 pixel images. The model is able to generalize well to new unseen viewing angles and maintains consistent colors. The black spots that appear during the interpolation can be due to cars that appear and disappear from the scene, which the model interprets as shadows. Next, we can look at the shape that the network has learned. It appears that the main buildings are successfully extracted and that the majority of the altitude estimation errors occur near the edges of the scene. This is expected because the areas around the edges of the scene appear only in a few of the training images. Smaller elements like trees are also learned. We can also visualize the value of the sun visibility function at the surface. In this rendering, white represents a high amount of incoming solar light, and black represents shadows. We can see that the network has learned to properly shade the facades of buildings, even the ones that are always in the shadow in the dataset. This demonstrates how shadow nerf can also be leveraged as a 3D shadow detector. Another interesting side product is the shadow-free rendering, where we visualize the estimated albedo at the surface. This result shows that most of the shadows are removed from the rendered images, even though some remain near the edges of the scene. Most importantly, the color of areas that are always in the shadow in the dataset is restored to a certain degree. Here we show some results on different scenes. This is a diffuse urban cover with very small variations in altitude. The details of the surface shape are not very well estimated, but some of the larger trees and flat areas are visible. This next example shows an industrial commercial area. Here, the shadow nerf succeeds in restoring a majority of the scene elements and provides a smooth interpolation between the different solar positions. Some artifacts still remain in the shape estimation, but these could be filtered out in post-processing. The last example is a coastal urban area. While the L-shaped building is well detected and shaded, the height of the water surface is poorly learned. This is because of the lack of visual cues that the network needs in order to learn shape. Luckily, water is quite easy to detect through other means, so we don't see this as much of an issue for practical purposes. Overall, shadow neural radiance fields provide a tool for performing photogrammetry based on any number of satellite images taken in different known lighting conditions. They show success in generating new views in unseen lighting conditions, in roughly estimating the shape of the seen objects, 
in detecting shadows and in removing them from the representation. Thanks for watching.